Well, hello everyone and welcome to the pumpkinized version of the garden life. I'm here with my buddy, Sean, at my favorite pumpkin source. I'm at Bricks Garden Exchange on the corner of 40th and Classen. And you have um, the notoriety of being the first pumpkins I've seen in town. Well, we're excited to have them here on the lot. You know, the pumpkins are just uh, beautiful this year and, and we just uh, love the being around the energy of the pumpkins. So to get them out here this week yeah. has been uh, has been great. Well, and to me, pumpkins are the reward for making it through a long, hot summer. That's right. Now we know that uh, that that the uh, the end of the of the of the summer stress is here and we're, we're ready for the fall season and to beautify our lives with some uh, fresh fall plants yeah. and pumpkins. Yeah, we're gonna get our pumpkins on. Now I have to I have to start out, Stuart, with just, a, I guess, a little tease. This is so cute. So you said that a friend of yours made this just from recycled pallet boards. And if you guys want to make this, if you're having a big Halloween bash or something along those lines, and you want to replicate this, then take a screenshot of this right here and you can probably figure out a way to construct one of your own, but the kiddos can come, they can get their picture taken here. It'll be such a fun thing to do before they go out and um, just gorge on these gourds because they are they are just so fun. I, I never, I, I just have such avarice when I come. I just can't get enough. But thank you for having us here. As always, you guys, it's Bricks Garden Exchange um, on the corner. Again, a 40th and Classen. You can get your pumpkins here to style them yourself. They provide styling services. They also have a ton of mums and you got a new shipment of perennials and and that's right. And things like that. That's right. We've got, we've got, uh, we've got a great, uh, deal of mums and, and then also, uh, a, a, a great set of, uh, native perennials from Leah's garden. Wonderful. Um, and a few house plants and some other, some other goodies. So what do you say, Stuart? Let's do it. Let's go. Well, Stuart, come on in to this very, very magical place. Say hello to the blooming desert willow. We always say hello to it whenever we come and visit our friends at Bricks Exchange. I think, I think it's, um, it's something I always look forward to when it blooms this time of year. So just take, let's first of all, give everyone just a broad view of all of the beautiful pumpkins and mums and kale and corn stalks, all of the things we associate with fall that, as I said earlier, is kind of our reward for living through a very, very hot summer. It is cooled down today. And you know, Stuart, I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, a lot of people pride themselves on having the first tomato of the season. <laughs> well, I kind of pride myself on having some of the first pumpkins in my garden for fall decor of the seasons. And so I'm gonna get my pumpkin on. We're gonna autumnalize. And look here, look at this. Another thing to appreciate when you come to some of these pumpkin stands, but at Bricks in particular, is even things like their signage is just so so charming, it's just enchanting. And there's all sorts, this kind of displays all of the different kinds of pumpkins that they had here. And don't you just love the names of them? Knucklehead and Enchanted and Warty Sunset. <laughs> I think that's just, just wonderful. So let's go around. I always like to kind of survey first to see what they've got. I've got a couple of inspiration picks that I am looking at. And Stuart, I think we need to put some of those inspiration picks up right here. I always give myself permission to diverge from those 
uh, those inspiration images, but they kind of give me a guiding focus for what my theme is for this year. So I'm going to select a few things to take home today, and then later I'm going to have bricks come out and help me style the cottage because a lot of them are going to be rather large and a little too large to fit in my little Fiat dot. <laughs> so let's just kind of take a look first and see what kind of things we have. What I might be doing today is looking at some, maybe some outdoor styling for the back. I'm not going to do a ton, but I'm going to do a little bit. What say you, Stuart? Good idea. A good idea. So first, look at all of the brilliant kale that they have. And to me, it speaks as much to fall as, as really any other kinds of plantings. And a lot of them then we can get to over winter and they will go into spring. But I think right now what I need for my lettuce bed is I'm gonna get, not only I'm gonna do pumpkins and that kind of thing, but I'm also gonna do some leafy vegetables. Isn't that gorgeous? So let's go back over here and I think I'm gonna get a few bright light Swiss chard in some of my favorite colors. Look at the fluorescent stems on those. Now I get these, I have to admit, in some cases more because I love the way they look, even more so than I think I love the taste, and they look beautiful in the vase. So I'm just going to put three of these. I'm going to plant them in one of the raised beds in the back. Typically, I grow this from seed, but very obviously because I didn't get my my beds in, my raised beds in until late. I'm a little bit behind the curve on that. And I'll probably I'll probably come back when I do my window box. I will probably come back and get some of the kale just for that purpose. Um, I'm gonna kind of not only survey what they've got here, but I'm gonna kind of survey my needs at home to see how many kale will fit in the window box and kind of what I wanna do in that regard. So that may be a styling the window box. That's my question of the day. Do you guys, if you have a window box or outdoor planters, do you style them just the way you style your steps or your front door? for fall when you are pumpkinizing. And yes, pumpkinizing is a verb. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at these things. They're absolutely wonderful and they're relatively unblemished by any, yeah, by any cabbage worms. And don't you just love, 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 love the roughly texture of those, Stuart? So good inventory on, on them. They also have a really good inventory of, of little pumpkins. I'm wanting to do some, you know, kind of pale blue and gray pumpkins. So I think I'm going to look at these Jaredale. I have no idea if I am pronouncing that correctly. But again, I'm all about the stems here. So I'm going to look at this patch from this side. And then I'm also going to look at it from the other side before I make, before I make a decision. This is, um, this is kind of a fun thing to do. If you've got a, a mantle to decorate, get two of your really large pillar candlesticks and use them as kind of um, a platform and then put a couple of the pumpkins on top of those candlesticks and it makes them look um, it just really makes them look beautiful and kind of topiary-esque. Okay, so Stuart, let's go around this way and see. See what we need here. I see a cute little stem here. I've got to have not just the pumpkin, but I gotta have the stem. Okay. This is the variety, this specialty, these specialty white pumpkins. These are the ones that I got that I used in my kitchen. And I think I just love the way some of them are kind of creamy white and then some of them, <clears throat> excuse me, are white white. Okay, look at this one. 
Look at that stem. Is that not brilliant? Okay, I think this has to go into my pot. Again, this is, I'm still doing indoor styling kind of stuff for the most part. And another thing that I enjoy when I come, I mean, look at just how cute their carts are. Their carts are just, are just cute. Don't overlook the, do I become like a little kid when I'm here? I'm sorry, it's kind of probably obnoxious, but it's the lens through which I look at things. I'm really liking these two. And again, if in doubt, always get things in threes. And now we're on the other side of the blue-gray pumpkins. Look at this weird guy. Oh my goodness. Now that is like a double pumpkin. Okay, that is like a turban. <laughs> and and that was a pretty heavy turban. <laughs> Isn't that fun? The shape of that <clears throat> It almost looks like it, you know how you make- Conjoining twins. Is it's conjoining, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Something along those lines. Okay, but I am going for something a little bit daintier. So I really like this one. And here's another question of the day. If, if you are from Australia, Europe, um, South America, right, honestly, if you're just from any, Canada, if you're from anywhere outside of the United States, do you anywhere find it, a, yeah, <laughs> do you find it a little strange how Americans just go bonkers over fall decor and every year? Is that not an, like an international thing? Not necessarily, oh, wow. not necessarily. I, and particularly Halloween is kind of unique to the United States, but it is rapidly becoming you know, the, the, the holiday after Christmas that people go bonkers over. And I think it's because it's so hot in so many parts of the United States that we're ready to celebrate once it cools down. Let's see, I need one more small one. And always you should look to make sure that your pumpkins aren't blemished and they don't have any soft spots. And these are all beautifully taken care of. Um, now, another thing to note is, Stuart, I think we might get some rain tomorrow. Um, that's, what, uh, that's what I've been told. So if that's the case, then you want to get out today. If you're in the Oklahoma City area, you want to get out today, come by uh, Bricks and select your pumpkins. Oh, this one is fun. It's, it's kind of flat and squishy and kind of fun. I like that one. Okay, so there is that, Stuart. Now let's keep going along. Now while I'm doing this, I'm kind of envisioning again what I might want to do outside. But I'm gonna wait for this anticipated rain to pass first. I'm also hoping that this year at the cottage, uh, that squirrels aren't going to be as much of a vexation as they were at my other house. Ooh, I adore this color. I really adore this color. Okay, now, I think in the great room, which has an African safari vibe, I think I might need one of these that kind of reminds me of elephants. Do, those, do these right here, these warty gray ones kind of remind you of elephants? Or is that just me? It could just be I me. Can, I think I can see it. Uh, but I think it would be fun to just have one of these in the great room. Look at this pretty color. It's kind of, kind of got some blue tones to it. It does look good with the others. And sometimes you guys, uh, I think it was when you come here, ask either, you can ask for Jen, uh, who is just so helpful. She's probably the pumpkin queen and I think does most of the styling and she can help you if you are in the local area and you want your front porch styled, they will come out and do it for you. Or you can ask for Christy who has the most beautiful red hair. It's almost the color of these pumpkins 
and they can help you if you get here and you're just kind of overwhelmed with the beauty of all of these gourds. I do love this, the very unique veining in these, in the, okay, this is a fun name, the one too many next door to the knuckleheads. That is so, so fun. Now I'm gonna have to stop over here, Stuart, and take a look at what kind of stuff they have for the garden. Oh, they've got peas. Now my friend Gene, formerly the, the garden editor at Southern Living, he just sent me a bunch. I'm moving too fast for you, aren't I, Stuart? He just sent me a bunch of seed that there might still be enough growing time. Uh, these are the sweet, the peas I was talking about. This is a local, local grower, red dirt plants, and their stuff is always good. This looks like it might be freckles, salad blend. I don't know. I planted some of my own lettuce, so I may not. Hopefully, I'll have germination on it pretty soon. So I'm not going to get any starts. After I kind of do my, my fall cleanup in the front yard and cut back a lot of my own perennials, I'll probably come back and revisit this because some of these, like this, I bet this is Salvia grugii, cherry red. This would be fun in the butterfly garden area. So I'll come back and look at this. They've got some Coreopsis. They've got some little baby mums. They have some more Dusty Miller. Yes, the Coreopsis, isn't it fun? Is this a specific variety? This is Uptick Gold and Bronze. So I'm kind of looking at that. Oh, and look, they have some that are already composed some designer pots that have celosia and just all sorts of different plants. Now, celosia is one thing I did not need. I had plenty of it in my flower beds. I'm even pulling some of it out. Um, and I love it. I just didn't necessarily love it in the front flower beds, though I did love the Cleome. Look at, they've got really fun agaves, Z plants. They do have house plants here. Okay, Stuart, let's go to the back and see what kind of shrubs and maybe some evergreens we can find. Yes, Stuart, it does look just like a swan and this one looks just like an apple, a green apple on steroids. And I love this kind of study in this green and blue green. I think that's really effective. And of course I like things in threes. And then I've got some, oh, some really interesting kinds of sumac here, um, which is becoming a more and more popular cultivated plant. And it is one that definitely has beautiful fall foliage. This is called Tiger Eyes, and it turns a really beautiful, beautiful gold in the fall. And they've got some that's got more blackish hues. Well, this is such a special episode. I am so excited that I even donned an, my first of the year, I guess, autumnal outfit, and I thought I would share it with you on this outfit of the day from top to bottom. I have some round Ray-Ban sunglasses that, yes, I did get off of eBay. That is really my tip. If you are like me and you don't want to pay full price, then find what you are looking for on eBay. Uh, my top, I think I just bought it online. If I can find a link, I will let you know. But I wanted to share this little styling tip with you that a stylist once shared with me. Just because you have a collar doesn't mean you have to use it. So 
I don't like to have a collar when I wear this gorgeous fetish necklace that belonged to my mother-in-law, that belonged to Mamu. And I think it looks so much better and it sits so much more prettily if I've got a top on that does not have a collar. So the stylist tip was, she said, just turn your collar under and then you just have a v-neck blouse on and i thought okay that was kind of a no-brainer i should have thought of that myself so that's a little style tip for you and as i said my beautiful fetish necklace has a very santa fe vibe came from my mother-in-law um, my belt this is an old old silver buckle belt that i bought at a thrift store in santa fe one of my favorite ones i think i got it at free the monkey many many years ago my suede skirt Boy, is this an oldie but a goodie. I bet it is 25 years old. I got it at Target. It is a classic, yes, it's a classic piece. I bought it on sale. I have worn it for years and usually with my uh, equally as old, beaten up, but very classic equestrian brown leather boots that I got from Sundance a million years ago. Let's see, what am I forgetting? Uh, my earrings that match my necklace I actually got at TJ Maxx many, many years ago. And my ring was a Mockingbird Manor find, Stuart. Mm -hmm. Our friends at Mockingbird Manor, um, that's where I purchased this. Have I forgotten anything? Uh, I got a purse. Oh, I got this purse at an art festival many, many years ago. I think I got it in I think I got it in Boulder, Colorado, but it is just a great little over the shoulder or uh, messenger bag type little purse that you can carry with you when you don't want a big bag. So there you go. There is your outfit of the day, the first of the fall season. Okay, I've got another swan necked edition. I also found a flat of ajuga because I want to add a little bit more ajuga to the back and I know some of you are going to say that that is so overly aggressive in your area and I can say I could only wish that it would be overly <laughs> aggressive in dry Oklahoma because it makes a brilliant brilliant ground cover. Um, I, I've hit, there we go, you have to be a good driver. You have to be a good driver of your cart. Okay, if you are looking for different kinds of boxwood, this is a great place to look. Yesterday, I actually picked up three of these Golden Dream boxwoods because a signature touch of mine is actually to plant three things in individual pots. I'm gonna do a series of these on my plant terrace and on one of my plant terraces and I really like it. And I think these are so cute. I just think they're very, very cute. Um, and in the ground, but also just in little individual pots. Okay, as are these. So if it was closer to Christmas, yeah. these are golden Hinoki false cypress. And I think these, these are beautiful. I don't know that I really have enough shade for these, but I often will get something like this, even if it's not going to thrive, I might get it as a short-term seasonal beauty, almost like a bouquet of flowers that I would use in a container. Um, and by the way, you guys, I often get asked, if you're gonna be in Oklahoma City, um, if you're an Oklahoma City tourist, and I encourage you, this is a beautiful time to come to Oklahoma City. If you are, I often get asked what places should you visit, and I would definitely say if you come to Oklahoma City, come to Bricks, because it is just so fun. Great place to take pictures of your kids um, in front of the pumpkins. And I will be here on and off pretty much all week. So if you come and visit and you're shopping and you see me, flag me down and say hello. Okay, so I'm also, as you guys know, I am looking for a Japanese maple for my backyard. I, I love these cut leaf ones. This is a Tamayukiyami. Uh, tamayukiyami. Is that, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's beautiful with a cut leaf. But I am looking for something with more a more traditional leaf, like this. This might be, a, uh, this is Dragon Tears, and it's beautiful. I might want one that's already a little bit more mature. 
and this is a beautiful specimen right here. And this is Hefner's Red. These are varieties that I'm not that familiar with, but it's really, it is really beautiful. Again, they've got lots of different boxwood. Uh, it's grasses right now. It's wonderful to look for grasses while you're here. This looks like a familiar friend. This is Anne. This is the one that I have in my front yard that I hope to be pruning into a beautiful shape before too long. Let me get this tag here. That is a star magnolia. And it's really, it, it just kept putting out blooms this year, Stuart, into the summer, didn't it? Yep. And I had heard that it did not like being transplanted, but I didn't have any issue with it at all. Here are, here are some of the junipers that I like to grow, the Blue Point junipers. And this is a good price on them. If you are, these are $19, and if you're wanting to do some of these in pots as part of an autumnal design, this would make a beautiful, uh, a beautiful plant to hold center stage. Oh my goodness, they even have the hard to find lemon cypress. Look, they've got some kind of for the holidays. This is some of that hard to find lemon cypress. And yes, indeed, it does smell lemony. Stuart over here, let's just kind of do a, a little rotation so they can see all of the different beautiful evergreens they have. Now I was talking about maybe uh, planting a blue point juniper in the corners. These would be candidates, but they're already a little, they're already a little fuller than I like. And I'm still not 100% sure that I want to put anything in those corners because it may not be necessary. But I just love the way all of these conifers smell. This guy right here. This is beautiful, but I don't know that it always does well in Oklahoma. And I this think... Is the one that I think of is the Charlie Brown tree? Well, I don't think... Well, I don't, I don't know. I think that was just kind of a generic Charlie Brown tree. I think this might be a Norway spruce. And it's beautiful, but I don't know that it would do very well. Maybe in a specific microclimate. What does do well are these Arizona cypress. This is Carolina Sapphire Arizona Cypress, and I just think these are wonderful. And I love, I love their scent, and... That's a wa uh, wacky looking one. It's a wacky look, yeah, it is. It's a little <laughs> weeping, it's a little weeping. But the other thing that I love about them is as, as cut flower material, I think they're wonderful. Like wouldn't some of this look beautiful in an arrangement with some of those blue pumpkins or some of the gray pumpkins. And really, really fun. I need to get some, some Arizona cypress greenery around the holidays because it would be beautiful as part of some of my holiday decor. And then you can see that not only do they have lots of members of their team, but they have lots of depth to their team players because look at all of these pumpkins that are staged back here. So as soon as the front becomes a little bit depleted, they can renew their inventory just by coming to the back here. I'm gonna take a quick look over here, Stuart. Please, in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on how you're going to be decorating both inside and outside for fall. If you have not subscribed, please make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, share with others who might enjoy this kind of content. And if you are not already subscribed to my weekly newsletter, then definitely go to lindavotter.com and send, uh, send us a little message that you want to join in the fun and we will send you a copy of some of my best landscaping tips. So Stuart, what do you say? As you would say, should we blow this popsicle stand? Blow this popsicle stand um, and go home and start playing with some of our goodies and start planning 
for what the overall outdoor design is going to be. And of course, I will bring you along for the ride. You guys, watch some football, put on some autumn jazz, and have a great Sunday.